Hello guys, welcome to the train Parrot. Since Wednesday, I'm calling out for a breakout to the upside, saying that we have a CME gap between 64K and 67K. And I have to admit, it's been very difficult. There's been two consecutive fake outs to the upside before the third attempt, which was the successful one. You can see how the price built on the four hour, this wedge, which is actually bullish. And it had this breakout and I cannot believe how manipulative was this move here because after breaking out, it came back below and it actually put a lower low meaning that it probably went hunting for the stop losses of the longs before actually going higher. Now, if you just focus on the closest of the price here, you can see that the structure is perfectly bullish. This week to the downside was necessary to take out all the longs. Not to mention that the people that shorted this level here are also liquidated or on their way to getting liquidated. So it's been tough for everybody. And as I mentioned in yesterday live stream, I was not going to trade these longs using leverage. I'm literally just building up my spot position. Remember, I sold at 73K and I do not want to miss any potential pump. And I think I made the right choice because if I had traded each of these three breakouts, I would have gotten stopped out of three of them. Even though this play out, this went too low and it will have taken as well my stop loss. You can see that the volume of the ETFs is finally flipping from light red into dark red. That's something that's very similar to what happened around here, where we have a decent move to the upside and we're still holding the support of the volume. So this could be actually big. Later today, depending on where you live, the halving is going to complete. I'm planning to actually do a live stream as we complete the halving. I'm sure there will be a lot of volatility during the event. That's in 13 hours from now. If you want to know at what time I'm going to be live, come back to my YouTube channel and in my profile, you're gonna find at what time in your time zone the live stream is gonna go. It's interesting to see that with this move to the upside, we are starting to see a very small, insignificant selling from large holders. It's still below the moving average. So this could be just one of these selling events here, but still reducing the amount of deposits, which is precisely what we want to start having some bullish momentum. An update on the CME gap, you can see how the wells are feasting with the liquidity that was left between 64.1 and 67.1. They got close to taking half of all the liquidity. And the thing that looks more bullish about this is that if the wells were to complete their feast and take all the remaining liquidity, that's going to leave one of the most bullish candles that you can have with a massive week to the downside, full of green in this area, and at the same time becoming a double bottom. I remind you, the halving is going to come loads of volatility. So we do not know for how long it might stand this bullishness. The breakout is in the four hour. On the daily, we held support and we are currently above this resistance, but it depends how we close the day, whether this is just going to become a confirmation of the dump to the downside. So be very careful with how high you're aiming. Remember that this could go all the way to 67, take all that liquidity, come back, close the daily below this resistance and still come down. So be realistic. Don't just focus on we are back on the game. This is fully bullish and we must go to 75 or 80 from here. The daily RSI shows that we have a local breakout, which was a line plotted yesterday in the live stream. I told you that this breakout is very interesting to take. With a smaller amount, the bigger, the larger price comes when we break out from this line. This is just an internal breakout of the daily. Of course, if the RSI makes it to here and it closes above this, we are going to be at a very high price of Bitcoin. That's an RSI of 50, which takes us in between 66 to 67. 
meaning that if we complete our job of taking out all the liquidity from the CME gap and we continue the journey going higher, approaching this level here that is packed with liquidity as well, that is the recipe for this breakout to happen and for a reversal to the upside on the daily. Remember yesterday we were seeing all this liquidity. These are the hopes from the traders wanting to get into a cheaper price. I believe that this liquidity that was concentrating here, showing so much interest into buying at a cheaper price was what ultimately caused the price to push higher. We're at 19th of April and the candle of the monthly is looking pretty good. Of course, now we have been during the day approaching even 65. If we were to close the month at these prices, that will still constitute a retest of this breakout. As I have been mentioning, what we do not want is an engulfing red candle taking out the progress that we did in March. That will give us a hint that we're going lower following the red arrow towards 54 at this point, which coincides with the precise location of the bull market support band that tends to provide support during all the bull markets. Currently, the delta flip into greens, meaning that the longs are more exposed to risk. The delta is barely 200k, so it's not that much. I will call this is almost balanced. As you can see with this last move, Bitcoin, Ethereum is no longer showing here a bounce, but is still above the trend line. This is a typical behavior of Bitcoin making the first move during this daily downtrend. Bitcoin needs to prove that after this breakout is going to hold and it's going to continue going higher, putting higher highs and higher lows on the daily. And then what the flow of crypto says is that then funds will flow into Ethereum and then into the next layer of all coins. All coin season today is at 39 and you can see how we went from week 39 on the other side for our as well we went to 51. The dominance seems to be pushing higher you can see that we are getting very close to 56 percent. Follow me on Twitter and keeping you up to date with all the breakouts of the old coins. As you can see here this was posted this morning so let's have a look at them. Render you can see the daily candle is above the resistance. R is on the same situation together with FET. SHIB earlier this morning was above the resistance, but now it seems to be coming back below it. Pepe and Sol are in progress of challenging it. So in order for these breakouts to play out in a similar way that they have in the past, whenever we have these big pumps on these massive performers during this bull market, what we need is first Bitcoin to start printing higher highs and higher lows, revert that trend to the upside. That will give investors with appetite for high risk to come back for these winners and start investing once again. But if Bitcoin fails this breakout that we're currently experiencing during the halving or post the halving, the altcoins will have no problem after the breakout to come back inside this ranch and wreck all the early investors. So that's why I will say this is a high risk deal because Bitcoin needs to prove that it can hold. But if it does, the reward can be magnificent. Most of these setups have multiple touches. It's been accumulating and investors are itchy to see that breakout and then they're going to experience FOMO and that could give you double digits returns if it plays out. Guys, if you want to trade any of these setups that I'm talking about, make sure you have a look at the link in the description. I have 60,000 in rewards from OKX and 6,000 on BingX. OKX is my preferred one to trade. All the tools and bots are really top notch. And BingX is also fantastic. And the reason I incorporated this exchange is because it's KYC friendly. You do not need to KYC to have access to leverage trading and futures on BingX. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you later today in the live stream during the halving. Have a fantastic Friday. Bye.